lot of Jamaica to talk to you. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. look, what can people expect at the Buffalo show? Like, what kind of show are you bringing with you this time? Okay, th this show is the, um, you know, unlike what you saw in Jamaica, mm -hmm. this show is the full production. All right. This is the full uh, thing. Um, you know, the state set. We have a new wardrobe, uh -oh. which is great. I mean, it's really great. We're singing uh, uh, at least five new songs from the new album, mm -hmm. along with all of the other uh, the, the uh, other catalog stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just going to be good, you know. I mean, there'll be no pyrotechnics and no no half naked girls <laughs> dancing around. Well, then what are they? I mean, you're known for dressing up your background. Like, what's the costume going to be like? What can people expect? All right. The, the theme is is escape, escape and elegance. Okay. You know, like what you used to always go to the theater right. for, to a concert for, this is that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's really, really um, going to please please everyone, you know. And, um, you know, it's just elegant. You know, to just be very elegant. Mm -hmm. Now, what you mentioned escape, you know, and obviously, um, you know, we're kind of dealing in the wake of some very tragic circumstances. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's what people need right now? Do you think that's what people are looking for in entertainment? Uh, yeah, I think that's what, what they could use as part of their healing process. Mm -hmm. You know, I wouldn't go, you know, I wouldn't go to say that that's what they need because I don't think there's any one thing that they need or that we all need, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I think your own healing is... is you need your own formula for healing, in other words. Right. And with some people, it may be escapism, and some people, it may be immersing themselves into the into the throes and into the to the heat of what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, that's a that's an inside job for each person to determine. But I know that you know my function as an entertainer, if they need escape, is to provide the best I can give them. Mm -hmm. I mean, one thing I think about your songs too is you know a lot of your songs are about you know a kind of being alone whether it's house and not a home or something like that and then your new single is sort of um you know about somebody like on the verge of losing somebody mm -hmm. um you know in sort of a tragic circumstance so do you think do you know do real life events kind of bring a new poignancy to those type of songs you know do, do things like that go through your mind when you're performing them now or yeah you know i think in listening to the well I would suspect that in listening to them, um, I'll address what goes through my mind in a, in a second, but in terms of, of the person who listens to them, um, it does invite them to do some, some inventory and some introspection, mm -hmm. you know, as to what's going on in their lives in a, in a daily basis, on a daily basis, you know. Mm -hmm. um, Myself, I've always escaped and shrouded myself in the music when other things weren't weren't to my liking. Mm -hmm. You know, um, that's that's that whole concept of the outside world versus the inside world. Right. You know? And you know, going inside where it feels safe. You know, well, no, no matter what what happens, if if I build a world inside my own mind that is safe and and great and warm, only when I come outside of that do I have to be accosted with a uh, with with you know a bunch of other negatives. Mm -hmm. but, but how are sad songs comforting? I mean, I know they can be, but you know what I mean. Like if you're sort of retreating from something sad, then why does a sad song maybe find uh, provide some sort of escape? Well, because of the way it makes you feel. You know, it's it's there's no one type of book that you would read that you have to read to make you feel better. You know, uh, who's to say that a self help book? is better for me when I'm feeling down than uh, than, uh, than Gone with the Wind. Mm -hmm. There's nothing to say that. There's beauty in the sadness There's a, 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 and in the loss and in the longing and in the, in, in the recovery from all of that, too. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, if you know, at the base of it all is, is the feeling that we can live on in spite of this or we can definitely rise above this, you know. And all the songs are, are not sad and, and, and about loss and longing, but... But for some reason, the ones that people often remember are those songs about loss and longing, mm -hmm. which brings me to conclude that a lot of people have that in their mindset, you know, that, that it's a concern. That, that's not something, in other words, that happens to someone else. Right. You know, like, like winning the lottery is something that happens to someone else. Mm -hmm. But loss and longing is something that everyone can speak on in their own behalf. Mm -hmm. 
Now, I know, you know, firsthand that you kind of have, a, we've talked about you having a fear of flying. Oh, yeah. And, you know, now we've kind of had the Aaliyah tragedy, and then we've had the September 11th thing, and I know you um, decided not to go, um, you know, to receive the award in London that they were going to give you. Right. But, like, has that affected, are you still flying? Do you plan on flying? Well, yeah, because, you know what, I, I heed the whole suggestion by everyone that says we got to get back to business as usual. Mm -hmm. We have to get back to to going out and going to restaurants and going to the movies and flying and taking trips and doing what it is that that we do to keep the economy functioning correctly and, and great. And, you know, my fear of flying, Craig, was never that rational. Right. You, you know what I'm saying? Mine was a downright phobia, which by definition is an irrational fear. Right. And, and so, uh, you know, my concerns are, are not as much cerebral as they are just I don't like turbulence you know and yeah. I don't like the air pockets and you know and all of that kind of thing mm -hmm. no I know exactly what you mean because I feel the same way like it didn't intensify my fear really that much more. I flew I had to fly to Atlanta last week and you know it was kind of just as terrifying as it always has been but it was no more so so Oh, it, 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 it wasn't any more so, for real? Okay. Yeah, I mean, it, it was a little bit tense just kind of getting, because you feel like you're like, in addition to the turbulence, you're also kind of looking, well, what's he up to next, you know, what's he, what he's digging in his bag, kind of that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But not really, you know, it's like I've never felt completely, I think it hit people the deepest that always, that kind of had a, a real safety on planes, and because I had never really gotten to that point, it didn't kind of shake me my foundations quite as much as I think it did for some people, you know. Uh -huh. But, you know, we know New York City's your hometown. Yeah. Um, where were you, and then how does this affect your perception sort of about just the place you grew up, you know? Well, um, I was asleep, and a friend of mine called and said, turn on CNN, turn on CNN. And so I turned on CNN, and I saw one building intact, mm -hmm. and I saw the other building with the black smoke. Right. Um, and he says, can you believe that a plane crashed into the World Trade Center? You know, and we went through the, the normal, you know, probe about how can it lose its navigational capabilities, you know, and, and veer that far off and blah, blah, blah. You know, we were saying, right. that's just amazing. What an amazing thing to accidentally happen. Mm -hmm. That's what we all, that's what we both were assuming. Then as we're watching it over the phone, you know, I see the... Um, Sec, uh, a second plane, which at first I thought may be some sort of rescue type of thing or some something that's coming closer to look, right? You know. But I, then I said, "Well, wait a minute. That, that's not a helicopter. That's an airplane." Mm -hmm. You know. And as it banked, and as it banked and came around closer and closer, we both got silent and you know, sort of said, "No, this couldn't be what's about to happen." And the next thing you knew. It went right into the building, mm -hmm. right into the building, and it's just, uh, it's, it's still startling to this day, and as a New Yorker, like you say, you know, my mother lives near, mm -hmm. nearby, so I had to go down there. They don't let you drive past 14th Street. Mm -hmm. They weren't letting you drive past 14th Street at that point, right. so you had to walk in the dust and, and the, the particles in the air and the debris. And, you know, it was just insane. It was just so intense, you know. And then when you realize that a lot of that dust is the cremation of human people. Mm -hmm. You know, it's 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 a definitely, definitely a, a reality check. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, and I know you're really close to your mom, so you had to go down and kind of make sure she was okay and everything. Oh, yeah, like that. yeah. Um, well, let's move to happier subject real quick. So, you know, when I talked to you last, this whole thing about the kind of, um, can't really call it a comeback album, but just this new project um, where you're making some different decisions and stuff, it was all kind of theoretical. You know, we didn't know how it was going to impact people and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Now we know it's a hit. And I was just wondering, like, how did you celebrate those first week sales? Were, like, the, were, which were the best of your career? Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's so... It's so funny, my reaction to something like that is to to prepare and try to get more, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, that's not a cue for me to stop and, and sit back and reflect. That's a cue for me to to ask them to, let's do all the promotion we can. Let's let's make sure, once I see that week one is good, or, or whenever I see something good, like if it's week, whether it's week 17 or whatever, <laughs> once I see that week 17 is good, the way my mind works is I want to, do what I can to ensure that weeks 18 and 19 and 20 are good. Mm -hmm. 
so you know I went into to high promotion mode you know um, wanted, wanted, you know I did a lot of TV lots of promotion lots of uh, um, um, in, a lot of interviews you know just plugging away visited a lot of radio stations mm -hmm. you know uh, hip hop stations as well because they were receiving the album really well mm -hmm. so you know that, that's what we and that's what we continue to do we're in between singles now mm -hmm. and the album will I think ascend again when the second single can heaven wait uh, starts to you know come to life right and why do you think that your music um, has seemed to really speak to people at this point you know where some of your contemporaries you know their music isn't quite doing that oh I have no idea so you're not analytical no about stuff that like you don't reflect on what not analytical no no I, I, I am analytical about it and I can't come up with an answer that makes mm -hmm. sense because there's so many talented people um, uh, that should be heard that aren't being being heard right now you know and and certainly it's you know I don't know why mine is is uh I don't know sort of um um showing up you know when a lot of the others are not mm -hmm. I don't know you know I never gauge myself in proximity to other people mm -hmm. on any level musical or otherwise no explain you except skinny people <laughs> Am I as thin as he is? Yes, good. You know, that's, that's, but other than that, no. Well, explain. you've explained to me before, but just do it again for this piece. Um, explain why you hate the baby-making label so much, because I heard it on the radio, I think, a couple of days ago, oh. and I know that you just that just gets under your skin. So. Well, was I saying it, or was someone saying it? Um, no, somebody was saying it about you on the radio, and I know you've expressed to me before how much... Um, you don't like that and you don't think that's a fair representation of your music so I just wanted to know if you could just yeah, kind of get I, I, I think I think over the long term mm -hmm. it trivializes uh, the, the musical contribution that I'm trying to make or, or the musical career that I'm trying to have okay you know um, uh, and how I'm trying to be remembered you know I don't want to be remembered in context of the bedroom <laughs> you know the music is about romance yes but it's not about booties right you know, and so people tend to lump all of that into one big hefty bag at the end of the day, mm -hmm. you know, and and I don't want to be in that bag. I want to be in a different bag. I want to be in the bag that, that, that has the people who are considered the best singers of our time, mm -hmm. you know, not in the bag with, with those who are bumping and grinding and, and, you know, talking about, you know, the people's thighs and booties and stuff. You know, that would be unfair to... to what it is that I've tried so hard to work for. Uh -huh. And that's another reason that 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 I always am so concerned with, with not having mainstream success, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because I don't want to be just, <clears throat> I want to expand it, you know. I admire what, you know, what, what, um, what a lot of the artists who've crossed over really well, mm -hmm. you know, like Lionel Richie, even Barry Wright for that matter. Mm -hmm. matter. Even, um, even Al Green, you know, and Billy Ocean, and and and, and, uh, and well, Al Jarreau for a while. Right. Um, you know, I feel that I haven't had that yet. Even though, well, no, I feel that I feel that the the audience that I have live is disproportionate with the the people who buy the records okay. and the radio state the, the radio stations that my record companies get to mm -hmm. play the records. Mm -hmm. You know. They, they focus it on R&B, which, hey, that's my world. Right. That's my thing. That's that that's in my chromosomes. That's a given. You, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that, that's my passion. So, okay, that's great. We know we have to do that. Right. You know, but now what about the rest of the world that, that loves this art form, too? Right. You know, I'm not putting on a blonde wig to cross over. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's got to be on the same, you know, it's, it's got to be, there's got to be an effort to do it, you know, based on the people who, are the vehicles for the record. Mm -hmm. Last question for you. Any interesting Buffalo stories or anything? Have you been here before? Have you... I mean, obviously, oh, yeah, been here um, before, but anything memorable or... Um, well... No, what I really not, remember not. about Buffalo is the Buffalo Hilton. Is that still there? <laughs> I have no idea. I've only been here for a couple of months. So. Oh, okay. Matter of fact, when I, when I went down to Jamaica, I hadn't even started this job, so that's when I was just in transition to come to the paper, so. Oh, okay. That's basically, you know, that hasn't been that long. 
Oh, so you relocated uh, yeah. in order to get it for your new job? Well, I just always wanted to be at a newspaper. I always wanted to be a writer in a newspaper. I just, I, you know, I just kind of like that. And so, um, I, you know, I got a job here, and it was just sort of a good way to start to make the transition from magazines to papers. I mean, I still do all sorts of magazine writing, you know, freelance and stuff like that. But um, I just kind of, just as far as my daily thing, I just like being in an environment where, you know, somebody's writing about business and somebody's writing about sports. It's just a lot more kind of intellectually nurturing than just everybody's just talking about, you know, such and such as latest video, or Whitney look right. like this or that or whatever. You know right. what I mean? Uh huh. So, but just for me, so who's singing background on this? Um, <laughs> who's going to be singing background on this date? On this tour, on the tour? Yeah, well, the same people are going to be looking through the whole, because I know you were switching around, like, the last time we talked. But I guess that was because, I guess, Cindy and some people were doing Dave Matthews or something. Uh, yeah, temporarily they were doing Dave Matthews for a couple of shows. Mm -hmm. um, but now they're back. Okay. So it's the same exact people that, they're, they're, that it always is. Okay, well, I can't wait. Oh, it's going to be hot. And, and you know what? I'm going to enjoy doing it. And I think that's why I'm looking so forward to it. Because mm -hmm. I can tell that I'm going to enjoy it already. Because this will be like the first time with all the new songs and then yeah. everything else. And it's been a while since you've taken, I guess it's been since the Boys to Men tour, right? Since you've kind of done a big That's thing right. on the road. Mm -hmm. so. Did you come to that tour? I didn't see that one. Oh, okay. I haven't seen it in a while. I haven't seen, but I used to go like every single one. But then, um, I don't know, maybe um, Power of Love or something might have been the okay. last time. So, so you, you'll enjoy this. This is a different stage set than that. Okay. It's a little more intimate than that. Mm -hmm. That was... Uh, an, an arena stage set. Mm -hmm. So this one is is arena slash theater. Okay. Kind of converts back and forth for cool. the whole tour. You know? I can't wait. And tell Lois and them in the publicity office to give me some good seats because I'm okay. through when people will try to seat me in all, you know, X, Y, and Z and I'm trying right, to get right. into the performance and whatnot. Oh, so. no. You call Lois and tell I said to me. We'll make sure that you get good seats. <laughs> all right, Luther. Well, thank you very much. All right, then. Great. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.